Look, I'm gonna get straight to the point. I'm not here to tell you 10 tips for studying better. I'm here to tell you that engineering isn't just a degree. It isn't just a career. And it sure as hell isn't just a source for a fat fucking paycheck. I'm here to tell you that engineering is a responsibility. Yeah, we're not just engineering students, but we're engineers of the future. Therefore, we're gonna require ambition. We're gonna require integrity. And we're gonna require courage. Things that nobody here on YouTube talks about. Therefore, listen to my advice closely. Purpose. Look, all of the greatest engineers of all time have had a sense of purpose towards engineering. Nikola Tesla, his purpose was to provide AC power towards the entire globe and all of humanity. The Wright brothers had a purpose to make the first aircraft ever in history. Even in the modern age, Elon Musk has a purpose to explore space and colonize other planets. All the engineers who have made the world what it is today has all had a huge purpose towards engineering. And I'm not saying that you should have such a huge purpose like them, like, oh, I wanna change the world. Oh, I wanna colonize fucking Andromeda galaxy or whatever. But I'm saying you should have some sort of direction to what sort of career you wanna work in. And you're an engineering student, so the best time to do that is right now, not after you graduate when you're like, oh, I'm lost, oh, where do I work? When you define that direction that you wanna go towards, everything will fall into place. All of the projects that you make on your own time will be aligned with that dream career. All of the classes that you take seriously will be aligned with that dream career. Every internship that you work at will be aligned with that dream career. So decide right now, what is your purpose as an engineer? Do you want to be responsible for saving human life? Look into the medical industry. Do you want to be responsible for saving a dying planet? Then look into environmental or sustainable energy industry. Do you want to build helicopters, airplanes, or even jets that break the sound barrier? Break Mach fucking one? Then look into the aerospace industry. There is so much of a purpose anywhere in engineering. Just choose the right one that is for you and what calls to you inside of your heart. And as I said before, everything will fall into place. Because look at this one thing that's from my program linked down below. It's called the Experience Pyramid for Engineering Students. Everything falls into place. As you see, the baseline uh, thing that you need for all of experience is projects. And if you define your dream career right now, your purpose, then it'll be easy to define which types of projects you should be making. Now, reaching your purpose has to be done the right way. Acting with integrity acting ethically so that nothing goes wrong when you actually work in a career that fulfills your purpose. However, I know it and you probably know it. There's other students in your class that are cheating, already acting without integrity, already acting unethically, already wiring their mind to take shortcuts rather than do the right thing that will keep people safe. These are the people that I call pretengineers on my channel people that act without integrity. And you know, it's so common nowadays with like ChatGPT and Chegg, all these kinds of things, people using all of these softwares to fucking cheat on assignments, cheat on exams, for what? For what? Engineering school was meant to build you as an engineer. And these people, these pretengineers, are not building themselves at all when they cheat and act without integrity and act without ethics. And you know, you can laugh at me all you want and be like, oh, this guy's the nerd police. Oh my gosh, follow all the rules. But this is a habit that's gonna carry out into your career. When you graduate university and all is done and you haven't learned shit, you're gonna risk lives. If you cheat, you risk there being a gas leak at some company that you work at. If you cheat, you risk there being an airplane that has a flaw and then that aircraft ends up crashing with hundreds of people on board. Do you really want to live with that? No, and if you haven't clicked off of the video yet, I know you're not a pretend engineer. I just know that you're not and you're a purposeful engineer because you made it past the purpose point that I talked about. Now you're making it past the cheating point that I'm talking about and you're agreeing with what I'm saying. I really appreciate you. You should be part of the strongest community that I'm making of strong-minded engineers, like-minded engineers like us, the ones that aren't pretend engineers, like the ones that are surrounding us in university. Unlike those stupid ass group members in our group projects that we have sometimes that do jack shit, and then we have to end up doing their part of the project because they're lazy, lazy pretend engineers, disgusting pretend engineers. Engineering is meant to be hard. It is meant to be difficult and it always has been difficult. Did you see Nikola Tesla cheating and trying to get other people's solutions? No, he died broke. He didn't give a shit about money. He just cared about developing humanity. That's what a purposeful engineer does. 
The Wright brothers had no one to cheat off of when they made their plane. Nobody else invented a plane before them. And then there's Thomas Edison, who may have done some questionable things, but at least he didn't fucking use and abuse ChatGPT instead of doing the work himself and actually learning himself. Why did they do it? Because they weren't afraid of failure. They were not afraid of failure. Nikola Tesla failed dozens of times. The Wright brothers failed hundreds of times. Thomas Edison failed thousands of times. Their failures is why we're here today. That's why we shouldn't be afraid of failure at all. Failure is a part of engineering, but engineers don't see it as a bad thing. They don't see it as a bad thing at all, not one bit. But we see it as a proof that we need to revise our work. And revision is just a key role of the design process. We all know that. Okay, so don't be afraid of failure. Don't be afraid of failing your classes. Don't be afraid of failing any of these projects that you do in your free time. Don't be afraid of failing in a design club and embarrassing yourself in front of everyone else because these greatest engineers of all time, you think they didn't get embarrassed when they failed? Of course they got embarrassed. Now, of course, I'm not saying, oh, fail all of your classes. No, you still need to pass your classes. We all know that. But I'm saying that you shouldn't be afraid of failure. And you know, failures bound to happen. It's bound to happen in engineering, given how hard it is. But failure can become less frequent if you have a mentor to help you out, which is why I do what I do. Make these videos, make that program that I mentioned earlier, and make those calls so I could talk to other engineering students and guide them along the way because I know the way to reach your career and reach your purpose while you're in engineering school only. So if you made it this far, like what, seven, eight minutes into the video, you know you're meant for this program. <laughs> I can't wait to see you inside. Peace out.